We're the most prosperous, lucky, blessed generation I am in the history of mankind. And so while we've been dormant, taking all this for granted, naively telling ourselves that this could never happen here, the tyrant has been the most active. They've been making a move. And it's like, what, the, the, the greatest uh, trick the devil ever played was convincing, you know, people that he didn't exist. I mean, that's kind of what's happened here that, you know, the Democrat Party, oh, they're so moral, they're so good. They just, you know, have good intentions and the policies don't work. That's not true. We are facing a, a, a war, if you want, uh, of good versus evil. Welcome back. We're talking to Drew Allen, the host of the Drew Allen Show podcast uh, and the author of a new book, America's Last Stand. Will you vote to save or destroy America in 2024? So, Drew, let's get back to it. Why do you say this is, in fact, America's last stand? What is what is the evidence? What's the argument for that? Yeah, well, I think that people can look at what's happened just a, a little, you know, less than four years under the Biden administration, how far we've gone uh, in terms of national security, our, our the corruption of the education system. Uh, I mean, we're, we're facing a moral decay, economic decay. I mean, I call this in my book even uh, uh, the American Dark Age is what we're looking at. And if they have another four years to continue down this path, like you like you said yourself, we're only going to going to exist nominally. Uh, America will exist, but uh, our freedoms will be gone. And of course, unfortunately, uh, elections aren't going to be a way to to save ourselves. So this is really our last stand uh, to push back and and take control of our destiny and alter the future of the country for the better, to save it and protect it for our own posterity. And, but I want to be clear, too, when I say it's America's last stand, I'm not telling people that voting for Trump is going to solve all our problems because I'm 36, Eric, and the rest of my life is going to have to be dedicated to protecting the country because Look, we've been asleep at the wheel, and I, I'm not. I don't beat people up. It's inevitable. I say, look, where we are is inevitable. Lincoln, 20 years before the Civil War, he gave this speech to the Young Lyceums uh, Club in Illinois, and you know, he he talked about the fact that you know, you think that the Caesars and Napoleons of the world, you think they won't spring up amongst us? Of course they will. The Constitution is a great bulwark against tyranny, but it doesn't erase that from. Uh, going into and, and corrupting the hearts of of mankind. So we have we're the most prosperous, lucky, blessed generation I am in the history of mankind. And so while we've been dormant, taking all this for granted, naively telling ourselves that this could never happen here, the tyrant has been the most active. They've been making a move, and it's like what the the, the greatest uh, trick the devil ever played was convincing you know, people that he didn't exist. I mean, that's kind of what's happened here that, you know, the Democrat Party, oh, they're so moral, they're so good. They just, you know, have good intentions and the policies don't work. That's not true. We are facing a, a, a war, if you want, uh, of good versus evil, not just liberty versus tyranny, but it's, I mean, it's spiritual in nature even. Oh, there's absolutely no question. And again, I talk about this all the time and you're, you're quoting, uh, Lincoln's uh, speech at the Springfield uh, Young Men's Lyceum. He was a very, very young man. He was in his late 20s when he gave that speech, and it's astonishing. I quote it in my book, If You Can Keep It. He saw clearly, uh, almost better than anybody, really, w the greatness of America and the fragility of America, that if we don't keep the republic, uh, it doesn't keep itself, that, that we can be devoured from within. And as you are saying, that's basically what's been happening. In my lifetime, people have been asleep at the wheel. Let's face it, Republicans, most of them are utterly useless. Uh, that's putting it very, very kindly. Uh, they are self-serving, um, and they don't deserve to hold office, most of them, because they do not understand we are in a war for the soul of the republic, and not just America depends on it, but as America goes, so goes the whole world. There is chaos uh, in Ukraine, Russia, China, uh, Israel. All of the world depends on a strong, virtuous America, and obviously, under this regime, we're seeing a classic case. It's almost like the, the test case. He Biden looks makes you know makes Jimmy Carter look like Reagan, uh, as far as I can see, and it's it's uh, it's just a nightmare. Let's talk for a minute about the border because it's very hard for me to take in that even a Republican governor like Greg Abbott in Texas, it's taken him till now. I think it's despicable. I think he's pathetic. It's taken him till now to take a strong stand on the border. And I think, hey, it's great you're doing it now, but it's a little late. I think we've let in like thousands 
of Chinese nationals, uh, potential terrorists. Like we've actually done that because of you, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Um, and of course, you can lay the larger blame uh, at the at the footstep at the, at the doorstep of the Biden administration. But we have Republicans like Greg Abbott who are just kind of shrugging and then wondering why uh, people don't respect them. Yeah, it's really tragic for for you and me and the rest of the American people that the supposed leadership that is elected to obviously fulfill their constitutional duty, protect uh, the sovereignty of state and the country, uh, that they don't seem to care. You know, when we have this conversation and we've been having this conversation about how important 2024 is, uh, a lot of people are right. They don't get it. And our leaders don't get it. The Republican Party doesn't get it. And Abbott, it's kind of disgraceful because what it shows is he actually could have done something all along. So he knew he could do something. It's like I was flying back from Italy. I went with my six-month-old daughter, kind of crazy, wouldn't do it again. Anyway, but we were, we were trying to catch a plane, and we'd gone through a travel agent, and they didn't actually – they couldn't find the, the ticket for the infant. And I speak Italian, and it, and it helped a little bit. But you know, I, at first she, she said, sorry, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. You're just going to miss your flight. And I didn't take that answer, and I pushed back, and I said – no, you have to do something. And sure enough, she ticketed the kid, got it done. So why are you telling me that you can't do something right now when I know you can and it gets so bad, that's when you make the decision. And what's the point now? We've got 10 million almost illegals who've come into this country just under this administration. We don't know who they are. We do know who, who some of them are. They're going to be murders. They're going to be terrorist acts. Uh, congratulations, Greg Abbott. You're guilty. Congratulations, Joe Biden. Congratulations, evangelical voters who didn't vote in the last election. You're guilty because when you don't vote, you get people in power who make these policy decisions that lead to murder and mayhem and horrors. So we're down to the wire, Drew. Uh, we are, as you say, and I've been saying, uh, in an existential crisis for the soul of America. This is no hyperbole. I always say, boy, I wish that I were exaggerating but that's where we are. Things have gotten this bad. And also, I think a lot of it is being masked, that there are a lot of people that they don't, you, you know, they're, they're not really reporting the true state of the economy uh, or the, the effect that wokeness has had on our military, the effect that vaccine mandates have had on our military. We are a devastated nation compared to where we were under Donald Trump. I don't know how anyone can argue with that. Well, it's kind of like I'm sitting here waiting, I think many of us are, for the quote-unquote straw that's going to break the camel's back. There's so many crises that are unprecedented in nature. They're, they're so significant in scale that we're just wondering, you know, I mean, if, if China was to decide to invade Taiwan tomorrow, that could be it. You know, the unraveling crisis in the Middle East could end us. I mean, because our military is not prepared and so on and so forth. I mean, everywhere you look, it's just a dumpster fire. And of course, it's almost beneficial to this administration because you, you, you can't really remember all the things that this administration has done because they're constantly breaking through the ceiling of insanity that they have previously set for themselves the day before. And so on top of that, if people can't remember all the devastation that's happened under this administration, there's been so much ab abundance of it. Can Americans remember how great it was under Trump? And we have to remind them of that because th this is what I say too in the book. I say, you know, just ask yourself objectively, like Reagan in that one debate with Jimmy Carter, he said, what, you know, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Well, this is even more unique because Reagan hadn't been president before. They had to take him at his word and based on his record as a governor. But we have all lived under the Trump presidency. We have all lived and suffered under the Biden presidency. Are you better off under Biden than you were under Trump? And under Trump, of course, we had a loathsome propagandist media that told us it was so bad when we had it so good. And today, of course, we have it so bad. And, you know, to, 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 to point something out based on something you just said about we don't really know the true state of things. Last year, you remember Q2 economic results, job results came out. And the Biden administration told us, celebrated, they created something like one over a million jobs. And then it took the, the uh, Philadelphia Fed to come out in December and said, actually, we looked and they only created 10,000 jobs. OK, that that's, was last called, year. that's called lying. And ladies and gentlemen, as a fanatical, born-again evangelical Christian, I think lying is wrong. Uh, I know I'm alone in that. Uh, it's a freaky religious point of view. But I think lying is wrong when your government lies to you. Now listen, the funny thing is, uh, Drew, we're used to politicians shading the truth. 
we've never seen anything like this. I mean, and this is the thing, is, is the older you are, the more of a perspective you have. I am astonished. Under Biden, the, the, the level of lying has been ratcheted up. It's simply like nothing we've ever seen because it's one thing to have a different point of view and to, as I say, shade uh, things and to bend the narrative and you know, you're trying to advocate for what you believe. But we are seeing a level of brazen uh, lying that it, it, it takes my breath away. It takes my breath away to have uh, the press secretary routinely saying things that they're not even close to true or to have Biden say things that are not even close to true. Um, I, I think most Americans are basically good people who they're, they don't know how to take it in. I mean, if people are lying and lying and lying, you, you can't help but believe some of it, sort of. And I, and I think that's kind of what's happening. And then, of course, CNN... Uh, has gone over to the dark side. I mean, 10 years ago, they were somewhat moderate. They've, they've gone crazy. So it's hard for a lot of Americans to process where we are. Yeah, and, and I'd point out one other thing that happened under the, under the Biden administration, just in terms of perspective, about these are the types of lies, these are the types of scandals that would sink any other presidency yeah. in history. They're worse than everything before. When, when we had the botched Biden withdrawal from Afghanistan, not only did we ignore intelligence and we had 13 American service members murdered with a suicide bombing, but after that happened, the Biden administration ordered a drone strike and they claimed they took out in retaliation, right? Okay, we got the bad guys that did this. They claimed they killed, well, one and then two high level ISIS K planners. They told us that with a straight face. And then it turned out that they had actually murdered 10 innocent Afghans, including seven children, who were associated in some way with some kind of humane organization out of California. And they got caught doing that. So they knew they murdered 10 innocent Afghans in retaliation. They never got two ISIS-K planners like they said, but they tried to get away with that. I mean, that's astonishing when you think of Iran-Contra or anything else. The, this administration murdered 10 innocent Afghans and tried to lie to us and say that they got the bad guys. Unbelievable, the level of corruption and, and just, I mean, you're an evil person. I, again, I, I think that it, it is, I always try to try to figure out how, how, how is this happening? And I simply think most Americans, we've just never been used to anything like this. And so I think a lot of Americans cannot possibly take it in. And I've been on a process myself. When I first heard that, you know, Governor Cuomo, may he rest in peace, uh, is sending COVID patients into nursing homes. Uh, and my wife says to me, well, that, that it's, it's like they're trying to kill these elderly people. And I thought, oh my goodness, not, look, uh, he may differ from us politically, but he wouldn't do that. We now know that not only would he and others do things like that, but this kind of thing has been happening. And so it's, it's really, we're having to recalibrate. We're having to reestablish the idea that yes, in America, there are evil actors. There are people who don't care about life and death. There are people who don't care about anything except power. Um, it is vital that we wake up. Uh, we've just got uh, 30 seconds left before we go to a break, final segment. So final thoughts and we'll be back. Sure. At the end of the day, my message is one of encouragement because I call us the Patriots of 24. And I say it's unfortunate that we're going through this hardship right now. But honestly, thank God. Eric, thank God you're here. Thank God I'm here. Thank God there are many Patriots that are, are capable of, of meeting uh, the need in this country's history. And we have to ensure that our posterity looks back on us and can you know lift this country up uh, on their shoulders using our memory, like we can use the memory Amen. of Lincoln, the memory of the Patriots. 